carrot strong, like mat. What is going on everybody? Matthew Motos here and right in front of me I have the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Everybody's taking the time to unbox the Mate 20 Pro, but not this hoe. I wanna talk about the Mate 20 because it offers a lot of features that its bigger brother doesn't offer. Now the first thing you're gonna notice about this device is its price point. It's about 100 or $150 cheaper than the bigger P20 Pro. So right there and then, that's a feature to me because I like cheaper phones, especially if they're good. Now here's the device. The first thing I notice is its size. It's definitely a little bit thicker than the P20 Pro. As you can see here, we're presented with the SIM tool. We have a bunch of paperwork inside. We have the quick start manual, which we're not gonna take a look at. We have a little plastic case to get you going. To be quite honest with you, this case is very cheap. It's something you wanna use for now, but go out, spend the money and buy something a little bit more sexy and more importantly, a little bit more durable. Boom! Fast charger people, if you're an Apple owner, you probably don't recognize what this is. What it will do is charge your Huawei Mate 20 Pro to 70% in just 30 minutes. Of course, we have the charging cable. This is USB type C. And finally, headphones. We got headphones in the box. These ones are actually using a 3.5 millimeter jack because yes, my friends, the phone has a headphone jack. Beautiful. Now the first thing you're gonna notice on the back of the device is the triple lens setup. This gives you three different shooters for different situations, we'll get to that in a second, but you have a fourth little circle that acts as your flash. Besides that, the thickness of this phone is obviously bigger than the P20 Pro. This is a 6.53 inch device compared to 6.4, but if you look at the back of it, there's an actual physical fingerprint sensor embedded into the Mate 20 compared to the in-display fingerprint sensor that's inside of the P20 Pro. Now, I'll be honest with you. As cool as having an in-display fingerprint sensor is, it's not nearly as quick as having a physical piece of hardware. For this, you have to like shake the phone, you have to wait for the sensor to show up, and then by the time you press on it, I could have been in and out of the other device two or three times. I also like the fact that there's a headphone jack on the Mate 20. This is something that's not present on the Mate 20 Pro. So if you like your wired headphones, the cheaper device will give you that feature. Besides that, we have the same two-tone finish. The red accent button on the power button is a little bit more prevalent on the P20 Pro, but you kind of have it on the edges of the Mate 20. But besides that, the main other takeaway is probably the speaker situation. If you look at the bottom of both devices, the P20 Pro doesn't have any speakers on the bottom. They're actually inside of the phone and the sound perpetuates outside of the USB type speaker, allowing it to be combined with the top earpiece of the device to provide stereo sound. Unlike the Mate 20, you have one speaker on the bottom and the other speaker is kind of embedded on top of the frame of the device. Now, quite frankly, as long as it has stereo speakers, I'm quite happy, but if you're all about symmetry, then the P20 Pro is looking a little bit nicer. Speaking of nicer, the notch. The notch on both of these devices are a little bit different. On the P20 Pro, it's pretty much the exact same size as the iPhone XS, whereas on the Mate 20, it's a little dewdrop. At least that's what Huawei's calling it. Now, in all fairness, you do get more sensors inside of the P20 Pro, so you do have that 3D face unlock, but this is just a simple front-facing 24 megapixel camera. Now, I finally got both devices turned on, and as you can see here, the Mate 20 is using an IPS LCD display. It's not nearly as bright as the beautiful OLED QHD display on the P20 Pro, but it's more than acceptable, especially for its price point. It is 1080p, and you can notice it if you really pixel peep when you're staring at your device. It just doesn't look as crisp as the QHD display on the P20 Pro. I wish I knew who made both of these panels. All I know is that the display inside of the P20 Pro is being sourced from three different companies, whereas the LCD panel is probably being sourced from one or two. However, if you wanted to wirelessly charge any of these devices, you can't do it with the Mate 20. You can only do it with the P20 Pro. That also means you don't have that reverse wireless charging. Now, quite frankly, I don't think that's the biggest deal. I think it's really cool technology that Huawei created, but quite frankly, how often do you see yourself using that feature? Now, the next big difference is the camera setup. On the P20 Pro, you have a 40 megapixel normal lens, a 20 megapixel ultra wide lens, and an eight megapixel telephoto lens. The Mate 20 also has an eight megapixel telephoto lens, but you're being reduced down to 16 megapixels for the ultra wide lens and 20 megapixels for the regular lens. Now it's not saying it's a bad camera, but I'm sure there are differences when you're using both devices. But the fact that it still has three lenses with three different focal lengths is a great feature for a lot of people that don't want to carry different lenses.
lenses with them. You know what, let's do a little quick test to see which camera takes the better photos. So first up we have the Mate 20. This is the regular 20 megapixel camera, two times telephoto lens, and this is the ultra wide. Now in all fairness, the P20 Pro does go up to five times because it is utilizing that 40 megapixel sensor so it can use all of that data to provide a more clear image. Both devices do rock the same 24 megapixel camera. And I'll be honest with you, Huawei has never done a good job with their front facing camera. So I'm hoping this year that's been improved. Usually they go a little too hard on the beauty mode. So now we got a test sound. They both have stereo speakers, but the question is, are they the same or does one phone sound a little bit better? So the P20 Pro definitely sounds a little bit better. The highs are a little bit more crisp and I think the volume gets slightly louder, but it's not by much. I think the main takeaway here is they both have dual stereo speakers and that's exactly what you want in a smartphone. If you wanna know if they're better than the Pixel 3 or iPhone XS or even the Galaxy Note 9, I don't think they are. I think those have a better sound spectrum, but these guys come pretty close. Besides that, you get a 4,000 milliamp battery in the Mate 20, 4,200 in the P20 Pro, but I don't think you're gonna see that much of a difference in battery life because one display is 1080p and the other is QHD+, so it should even out somewhere. Nano SIM technology or nano SD card, which is a technology created by Huawei, so you can buy that down the road instead of using a micro SD card. And you also have the latest version of Android, MUI 9 and Android Pie version 9.0. So that pretty much wraps up this little unboxing and hands-on or mini review of the Mate 20 and I compared it to the P20 Pro. I got a lot of questions. Is the P20 Pro actually actually worth the extra cost. And I'm gonna put both of these phones through its paces, camera tests, experiences, everything. If you have any questions about both devices, let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on Discord if you can't wait and you wanna talk soon, maybe about your girlfriend problems, maybe your mother's giving you a hard time or your dog got lost, I'd be there for you. Like the video if you liked it, follow me on Instagram for some behind the scenes and subscribe so we can see you guys in the next video.